All right, guys, welcome to Ezekiel 26, the proclamation against Tyre. And uh, I actually got to sleep a little late today, so that's why the videos are coming out a little bit later. Um, because there's not been nothing going on, so I've been able to catch up, and I've needed it. So let's get right into this. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, because Tyre has said against Jerusalem, Aha! She is broken who was the gateway of the peoples. Now she is turned over to me. I shall be filled. She is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and will cause many nations to come up against you, as the sea causes its waves to come up. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers. I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. It shall be a place for spreading nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken says the Lord God. It shall become plunder for the nations. Funny enough, Tyre, if you'll look up where Tyre used to be. You can go visit it today. He swept it clean like a flat rock. And funny enough, the fishermen do lay their nets out there this very day. So here's another one of those promises God made that he fulfilled. This is what shows the, the, the Bible is accurate. People are like, well, why would he do that? Or how would he do that? Go look. It's done. It's been done. You can go to the original location of the city of Tyre. And everybody there knows that's what that is. And it is smooth. And they lay their, the fishermen lay their nets out there and dry them. God keeps his word. Verse 6. Also her daughter, villages, which are in the fields, shall be slain by the sword. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So here he's timestamping this destruction. King of kings, with horses, with chariots, with horsemen, with an army, with many people. He will slay with a sword your daughter, villages, in the fields. He will reap up a siege ground against you build a wall against you and raise a defense against you. He will direct his battering rams against your walls and with his axes he will break down your towers. Because of the abundance of the horses, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, the wagons and the chariots. When he enters your gates, as men enter a city that has been breached, with the hooves of his horses he will trample your streets. He will slay your people by the sword and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and pillage your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. They will lay your stones, your timber, and your soil in the midst of the water. And that's funny too, because when you go there and stand on the shore and look off just out in the water, you can see the chunks of stone out there where they were thrown off from the shoreline. I will put an end to the sound of your songs, and the sound of your harp shall be heard no more. I will make you like the top of a rock. You shall be a place for spreading nets, and you shall never be rebuilt. For I, the Lord, have spoken, says the Lord God. And every single time somebody's talked about doing it, they've never done it. They've talked about rebuilding that city multiple times. They've never done it. The Lord kept his promise. They never will. So there's a real-life example of God fulfilling his word. Verse 15, thus says the Lord God to Tyre, Will the coastlands not shake at the sound of your fall? With a wood, because they were that was a big town, big uh, shipping town. When the wounded cry, when slaughter is made in the midst of you, then all the princes of the sea will come down from their thrones, lay aside their robes, and take off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground, tremble every moment, and be astonished at you. And they will take up a lamentation for you and say to you how you have perished, O one inhabited by seafaring men. O renowned city who was strong at sea, she and her inhabitants, who caused their terror to be on all her inhabitants. Now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall. Yes, the coastlands by the sea are troubled at your departure. For thus says the Lord God, when I make you a desolate city, like cities that are not inhabited, when I bring the deep upon you and great waters cover you, then I will bring you down with those who descended into the pit, to the people of old. 
interesting verbiage there, the people of old, though that's because people way back were sent to hell too, and so they're still there. And I will make you dwell in the lowest part of the earth, in places desolate from antiquity, with those who go down to the pit, so that you may never be inhabited, and I shall establish glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror, and you shall be no more. Though you are sought for, you will never be found again, says the Lord God. And that is the case. So verse 20 makes a statement that disproves annihilationism again. They say you get sent to hell and you just burn up and that's the end of it. Well, that's not the case. Obviously, God is speaking here and he's saying they're still there. Waiting. I wonder if there's a sense down there of certain individuals that are going to arrive and they're waiting for them. Because there's a particular spot, I forget where it is, that seems to indicate that they are waiting for the new people to arrive. Interesting. See, there's a lot more we don't know. There's a lot more we probably are glad we don't know. So, here we have an instance, Ezekiel 26, where God says, this is what I'm going to do with this city. And we can go there to this very day and see that that was done. And it has been like that for a long time. Well over 2,000 years. No one has built there. And no one will build there because God said that. He said the same thing about Babylon. No one will build in the city. Well, the city was that one portion, that one section that's walled in. Everything outside of that was all the suburbs of the city. It was huge. And there was little places here and there, you know, shops and all. But that core city, he said, I'm going to destroy it and no one will build there again. No one will live there again. To this day, no one lives there. When God says something, it's going to happen. And it'll stay that way. And that's what happened. <laughs> that is what has happened. So we can prove God's word. We can prove what he says is true. Merely by reading the Bible and go look at those areas. Did it happen? Yeah, looks like it. We have the physical proof on the earth. So why is the Bible so improperly translated when so much of it is proving true? I think that people got something wrong there. But another example of, the, of what's going on here, another response to this is, if he makes a promise, it's going to happen. And we have the historical and the archaeological data to show that when God says this is going to happen, it happened. It for sure happened. It's there. We see it. We have the evidence. And a lot of people in academia have gotten saved from learning this knowledge and realizing it is true because they understand even greater than we do the improbability of something like that happening. And when they put all the puzzle pieces together, they realize, yep, this is it, and they get saved. Very interesting. Very powerful to show the for God to show His power on the earth. See, now not everybody will see see that. Not everybody will see it. And they'll say, "Well, that just that happened to a lot of cities back then." Yeah, but it wasn't just Tyre. It was all the villages around Tyre too. And if you go over there, there's some pretty nice land over there. Nobody's there to this day. Well, yeah, but that, that happened. I mean, that kind of stuff. Maybe it was disease or whatever. Hmm. What about Jericho? Oh, we never found Jericho. Yeah, we did find Jericho. He said that place would become uninhabited, and it has. And the walls have seismic damage that had to be repaired. Which is exactly what the Bible describes. And it just keeps going and going and going. And <laughs> the more they find... The more they find, the more they realize, hmm. See, there's a certain group within academia that knows exactly that this is all true. There was a records room that was created under the Sphinx. They found it and cleaned it out. Took all the evidence showing all this information and hid it. There were hidden chambers in the Great Pyramids and they found them. And that stuff was taken away and hidden. There was another records room 
a Greco-Roman records room. That was found and cleaned out. There's one more. I don't think they found it yet. Because there was three total. And they're trying to find it so they can clean it out. Because they don't want the world to see the truth. They don't want the, want the world to understand the reality. And this Bible... It's the culmination of that reality. Because if you saw that information, it would give you a completely different perspective on the past. And it would also tell you just how exactly how old the earth is and how things really were. There's a lot of history out there hidden away from public eye. Because if that came out, we wouldn't be following the people that we're following. They wouldn't be our leaders anymore. But it would be a great overthrow. This is why I hang on so hard to the Bible, because it's the one thing they can't touch. God didn't allow them to touch it. And they know that there's enough people that won't understand it, and they can put enough of a spin on it to keep people from getting locked in. What a perfect filter for God's people. Because we see it, we don't care. No, I believe this. Hey, yeah, you can't put your faith in it. Well, I did, and I'm going to continue to do so. Because he is my God, and I am his child. And there's nothing that's going to change that. So you go ahead and go do your little thing and leave me alone. That's why That's why we're so alone. So tomorrow will be Ezekiel 27. Lamentation for Tyre. This ought to be good. It's going to keep going. So it'll be a continuation of today's video. So guys, that was Ezekiel 26. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.